Hi everybody, welcome to a new series of tutorials. Today we are looking at um, Code Jam from Audio Modern. So a new fantastic MIDI app which has just been released. So let's go through um, an overview, a quick overview, and I'm trying to cover as much as I can in this first video. But I will add also others to demonstrate what great things you can achieve with Code Jam. So I'm inside the AUM, so the application is a UV3 compatible, as you would expect. Um, I have loaded the module Pro from Cork, and I have connected the AUM keyboard uh, into Co into the module Pro. So, um, if I click on some of the keys, you will hear the module Pro playing a nice piano. Now, the uh, chord jump lets you transform those uh, notes into chords. That's the first thing you can do, but it can do much more than that. So let's hide that keyboard for now and let's go inside uh, chord jump. As you can see, very interesting interface, very, very nice. So let's start from the very um, top left. We have a reset button, which allows you to go back to default settings, which might be very useful. You have the tempo here information. You have an undo function. You have a panic function, which is really nice, just in case you need it. You have the ability to record the um, sequencer, because yes, it has a sequencer. The configuration of pads, because he has pads which you can trigger via MIDI, and also the entire session as well, which is really nice. You also have settings here, which enables you to choose your external outputs which MIDI channel you want to use, but also allows you to do MIDI mapping here, which becomes very important, particularly if you want to trigger pads through a MIDI, an external MIDI controller. Very nice indeed. So let's go through this. At the bottom here, you have um, a number. Um, if I Let me click on preset. You have a keyboard by default, like so, but you can also access to preset, clicking on preset here. So let's uh, set it as default. You can see a keyboard here. If I click on some of the keys, you will hear chords be generating. You might be wondering, how does it generate chords? Well, let's go for it. Here you have, first of all, the key for the chords for the scale of the chords that you're going to use. So you can choose the one that you like. So in this case, we set it to C. Um, you have also the ability to, if you click on that zoom, to drag your audio file and it will identify the key as well, which is very nice if you have some audio files that you want to use to actually determine the key. Then I will come back with some of these controls later on. But here you can see the scale type. So in this case is minor. If you click on it, you have the choice of many different ones, or you can move left and right to go through the different scales that you have available. You can also click on the R here to select a random scale, which is really nice indeed. So let's continue with a minor. Here you have the octave, okay? And you can choose to go down an octave, uh, bar, up an octave, and so on. So let's go down. You can see in this case the code which is produced, which is highlighted if you, of course, hold on one key. You can go down, you can go also up an octave. Okay, very nice indeed. So let's set it to zero. And how does it determine which keys to form the code? Well, here you have the selection of a code type. Again, you click on it and you can choose many different uh, type of code. So let's start with a simple major scale. You can, of course, go left and right, up and down the different types of code type. And you can also click on the R to randomize the selection of, of some code. Now, as you select a different code, you also see uh, down here the available voices. So for example, the first one is the tonic. For, for example, if I'm playing uh, on C5, the first one correspond to that C5 where it says number one here. And I can indeed lower it by uh, 12 semitones. And you can see in this case, it played the C4. So depending on the, co the chord that type you have selected, you have a number of voices which um, form that code available up to five. Indeed, at the moment you have three because I selected a major scale, but if I was saying 
do a major six, I have also fourth one. Okay, in this case, it will be an A flat for a C minor chord. But if I was to choose, for example, major nine, I will also have a fifth one, right? In that case, I, I have a D5 in the chord that I typed. Now, um, the interesting thing, of course, is, in, for example, if you, if you select a major scale, and we are in C minor, C uh, and minor there. If I play, for example, on E flat, it will have an E flat and G5 and uh, a B flat 5. If I was to play E5, look, it will play the nearest chord based on the major scale, right? But if I wish to select now as a chord type my, uh, a minor scale, now pressing on E flat 5. You can see you don't have a G5, you have an F5. And if I was pressing on only 5 again, this time I would, would not have an A flat 5, but will have a G5. So the type of chord type you select will determine, according to also the keys, what keys will ultimately be generated for your chord. So let's stick to major scale for now. Um, here you have the ability, as I said, to uh, customize further the voices for the chord that you it has been generated so you can lower uh, by an octave you can go higher than an octave for all the voices that are available let's set it to zero zero by default or you can click here as well to have it by default you can disable some of voices or you can re-enable them you can randomize and click click in here in this on this button right but what you can do also is set it to randomize in infinite mode. So every time you click on a chord, it will randomize the uh, setting for the voices. And of course, when you found one that you like, you could, for example, lock it so that, uh, for example, when you use the overall randomizer, which is here, which randomizes voice velocity and also time setting in this case, uh, because you have locked the voices, those voices will not be randomized. So remember that is how it works. Similarly, you have something like that for velocity, which is really nice because it allows you to give um, um, some human feelings to effectively um, the playing of those chords. Here you have, in addition of setting the velocity for each individual voices, what you can do is also set a minimum and a maximum value, which are used for randomization. And again, you can randomize manually. You can set it to randomize in infinite mode. So every time you press on a chord, it will randomize velocity. Let's try. Of course, you can lock it for, for no further randomization, particularly when you use the overall randomizer here. And when you're finished, of course, if you want to go back to default, you click on this icon as it was the case for the voices here. Moving on, we have also the selection of time here, which is really nice because it gives you the ability to create a strumming effect. So for example, you can do something like this. Now let's press a chord and hold. Now let's remove the randomization here and let's go back to default, which is better. You can see a minor chord starting from C5. And you can hear that is like a strumming effect because it depends on the time you have here. Similar thing as other controls, you can set it to infinite mode in terms of randomization. You stop. You can stop it to be further randomized or you can go back to the default settings. You can also sync to the host and so that when you have a randomization, you see what happens on the right hand side, it shows you the different division. Which you see right here. Now let's remove the sync and you have also an ARP option, which is really nice. And you can set uh, what type of um, ARP you want in terms of pattern, random, up, down, up and down, etc. It's your arpeggio here. You can set the rate and you can also give it a swing effect. So let's try. Really, really nice. Let's, let's go back to time. And also here as well, I forgot to mention that you have minimum and maximum value as well. 
So you could say, great, this is, uh, allows me to create code in a very sophisticated way, but that's not everything because it is also a jamming tool. And indeed, at the bottom here, you find a sequencer. You can enable it like so. And here you have the number of step, in this case 32, but you can change it at the moment down here. You have the rates, which you can change as well. Okay. And then uh, let's go through it slowly. You have two types of lanes. Let's start which you can enable or disable, like so. So let's start with the first one, which is the human one, where you actually create a pattern yourself. And let me show you how it works. So you click, for example, on a C5. In this case, he's taking the configuration up here for the code. And he remembers the last code that you pressed. So you go on the human one, click on it, and you set... Um, um, a code at that step. Of course, you can continue like so, or you can also click and drag to increase the duration. So now let's play in a UM. You can see how it works? Very nice. Let's go up to an E flat five. So we put some codes here, like so. Let's play again. Very nice indeed. Here you have the ability to copy these on the other track. There you go. You have also the ability to delete, like so, a particular track, and like so as well. Now you also have a robot track here, which you can enable. That means that it will generate uh, codes which are selected here, okay, which I'll show you in a second, based on a rhythm or a groove which is selected up here. So let's click here to generate the uh, the pattern. There you go, it has been generated. So if I was to change here the groove, let's say future two and click here to come out, you see a different pattern. Now you may be asking, what? how does he know how, what code to use? Well, they are defined here. And if you click on the code, it shows you where you are on the keyboard and you can select the one that you want to be included, okay? At the moment, it is choosing the chords in sequential way, but you can also get it to choose in random way. So every time you generate, it will choose random chords. Okay, really nice indeed. And you, what you can also do is set it to generate in an infinite mode. So every time that you replay on the loops, it will regenerate um, the the chord. It will choose the chord itself in a, in a random way. So let's try. Really nice indeed. Also, he has an option that uh, if you click on a chord, you can still go up here and modify. So, for, for example, let's say I want an ARP there, like so. Then you click to come out and let's play again. So, really nice, really nice indeed. So, when you finished with uh, one uh, pattern, you can also go up here and say, save the pattern. So for example, in this case, test. Okay, and then we click save. And you can see it has been generated there as a groove and we can also delete it like so. And uh, you can choose a pattern here, or you can also choose a random pattern so in that case, the pattern will be changed every every time that the um, the part, so the groove will be changed every time the pattern is replayed in a loop mode by the sequencer. So again, really nice, really nice. You can combine the two tracks. You can have the rob track and also the human ones, and so you can do things. Uh, you can move the step like so, change the duration, add something. Like that, let's click play. Let's do it in a programmatic fashion. Okay, you might also notice that when it says random here, it gives you also the possibility to choose how many notes or chords you want as random. In this case, it says four. So let's delete this one and let me give you an example. Let's increase this to, uh, well, no, 19 is too much something like um, 12 and uh, let's play mm -hmm. 
Really cool. Now, in terms of the code that he selects, you can activate them or, de or deactivate them here, like so. Or you can go and click on this menu. And here you can choose different factory presets. Or you can define also your own here. You can change the order. You can duplicate some notes as well. You can uh, double click to remove one of them, add others like so. So really, really nice and straightforward. And you click on the, on a button, then you click out here, and it will change, of course, um, the uh, notes that it will use for the chords that will be generated and, and played by the sequencer. So it's really good. But that's not everything. You also have a pad section here. You click here. You have different pads. A 16, very simple to use. You click on one. Then you click on a pad, you click on another one, click on a pad, and then you can use the pads manually or map them to MIDI CC, which can be really nice. You have a latch option here, which allow you to play um, pads at tempo, which is really nice. You can save the configuration of the pads. You can clear a single one like that, or you can clear them all, clicking on clear all. Remember these, also remember the configuration of uh, the code. So if I click on C5 and I select ARP, then I click on 9. So it keeps the configuration, which is really, really cool. Now, the other thing um, I, want, I haven't showed you yet is this uh, symbol here. If I click on it, it will randomize the selection of the key. Okay. Every time I click, the keys changes, and but it does more than that because if you click and open, in this case, the key, you can select which one you want to disable or enable, which is really nice in terms of avoiding uh, some, in this case, key selection that you don't want. So this is applicable to key, to scale type, you see here, also to the core type, here on the rate for the arpeggios where you see the symbol. So really, really, really nice. Lastly, what I wanted to show you is when you actually uh, have a pattern like so played by the sequencer, you have a groove that you like, click, you can click on preset and click on the plus. Okay, and it will generate, will save that. And you can see it um, up here, if you go on preset, there it is. Okay, sequencer number one, which you can still further delete if you want. So let's create a different one like that and it will be different because we still have the random function enabled we can save that uh, as well and then you can move from one to the other really nicely in this case if i um move these um away no random let's play and let's change patterns as we play So you can so you can you can create some very incredible um, jumps, quite some sophisticated one one as well. So I hope you enjoyed. It was uh, uh, just an overview of how you can use a chord jump, and I will create additional video and uh, to explain uh, a little bit uh, in more detail how everything works with some examples as well. Okay, bye.